In this video, I'll be talking about the role of genetic counseling and testing for people with breast cancer. I'll talk about what does genetic counseling mean, who should get genetic counseling and testing, what would you do differently if you found that you had inherited a gene for breast and other cancers, how about insurance coverage, and what are the downsides? So what am I referring to when I talk about genetic risk assessment or genetic counseling and testing? To be most comprehensive and most useful to you, you should be seen by somebody who's knowledgeable in breast cancer genetics. I'm going to back up just a little bit and talk to you about why this is important. So about five up to 20%, depending on your family history and background, of breast cancers are related to a gene that you inherited from somebody in your family. This can be both your mother's and your father's side. And if you're adopted, obviously it could be from your birth mother or birth father. The reason I refer to this as genetic risk assessment is because it doesn't involve just getting a blood test or a swab from your cheek. This involves seeing somebody who's very knowledgeable in genetic counseling and genetic inheritance of breast and other cancers. Seeing somebody who knows about the inheritance patterns of breast cancer will allow you to learn everything possible about what this means. If you have an inherited susceptibility from either side, what the benefits of getting tested might be, what the downsides might be, and what the costs are. Some people also have questions about will they be able to get life insurance? How about disability insurance? What are the costs of acting on this information? A genetic counselor or other medical provider who's trained in genetic counseling can answer these questions for you. What I'm going to talk about today are just generalities. So the most important thing you might be wondering is, Will knowing if I have an inherited susceptibility affect my treatment? If you've had breast cancer, it may, may very well affect how you decide to get treated. If you have early stage breast cancer and you know that you have an inherited susceptibility or a so-called breast cancer gene, you may to have, decide to have a different kind of surgery. I'll get to that more in a moment. If you have an inherited susceptibility or gene for breast cancer, it will also be important for your family members to know. This would include your mother, your aunts and your uncles, your cousins, and your kids. So all three generations, your generation, your, your parents and their siblings, and generations that follow you. So if your grandmother, it's your grandkids too, as well as your siblings, which I don't think I mentioned a minute ago. It may also affect your treatment plans in terms of how you'll be treated in terms of your whole system, your body, if your cancer comes back in the future. And it can affect how you might prevent other cancers from developing in other parts of your body. Other parts of your body might include your ovaries, how you might be screened for other cancers like pancreas cancer, or even cancers that I haven't mentioned. What if you're the kind of person who just doesn't want to know? There are people like that, and that's okay. If you're not psychologically or emotionally ready to know, it's important to tell the people that you talk with all this about yourself. That's okay. To be tested, you actually have to be prepared to know. You can always get tested in the future. What are the most common genes associated with inherited susceptibility to breast cancer? The most common genes that most people have heard about are BRCA1 and BRCA2. You might also hear these called BRCA1 and BRCA2. These are the most famous or most commonly heard names, but there are also other genes that it's important to know about that you'll learn about when you go to genetic counseling. These have actually been expanded in the latest breast cancer genetic testing guidelines and include PALB1 and CHECK2. It's expanded in our guidelines because we're finding the role that these genes play in whether or not somebody is likely to have inherited a gene from their mother or father's side and whether these increase the risk of breast cancer and how they should be treated. How do you know if you should ask your doctor if you should get tested? 
The most important thing we use in deciding whether or not people should get tested is their family history and the type of cancer they have as well as the age at which you've been diagnosed with breast cancer. The most important information you can provide, if you have it, is your family history. If you don't know your family history, let your doctor know that you don't know your mother's side or your father's side, the history of cancer on either side, or if you're adopted. It's important to let them know that when you first meet them. They'll put that in the chart, and then they most likely won't ask you again. If you can, provide the family history on both sides of your family, not just your mother's side, and let them know whether you can um, provide the family history for your grandparents and grandkids and for your own generation, that is your brothers and sisters. Remember to include your cousins on both sides of the family as well. Not just whether or not they had cancer, but all types of cancer. So not just breast cancer, not just ovarian cancer, I'm talking stomach cancer, cancer of the uterus or endometrial cancer, cancer of the um, gastrointestinal tract like the colon cancer of the pancreas, every kind of cancer you can think of because there are syndromes or connections between different kinds of cancer that we need to know about in deciding who should get genetic testing. And then the other most important thing is the age at which people were affected. Early onset cancer, so people diagnosed at a younger age, is more likely to be associated with syndromes, those cancers that are connected one to another and more likely to be associated with genes in the family. So again, first and second degree family members, that's cousins, grandparents, grandkids, and of course first degree relatives are mother and father and siblings and kids and then the age and type of cancer that they have. That's the most important first step. This is a lot of information. If you want to learn more, visit yerba.com where we actually know much more about you from your medical records and you can get a more personalized report. The other people who will be tested more often are people who are of Ashkenazi Jewish descent, where we know there's a higher likelihood of a gene being passed down through the family. That's European Jew Jewish families are more likely to be uh, tested for um, cancer genes. And then an early age of onset, people with bilateral cancer in the family or in yourself, male breast cancer and then the earlier the age of onset, and then people who have a family history of triple negative breast cancer. Let me just explain what that is. That's people with estrogen receptor negative tumors, progesterone receptor negative tumors, and HER2 negative tumors. There are two other types of ways that you can get genetic testing that I actually don't advise. One is direct to consumer testing, like through the ancestry kits that you see advertised online. The reason we don't recommend this type of testing is because they don't test for gene duplication or for gene deletions. And these are important mutations that can give you an increased risk of genetic types of cancer. So I would not recommend these. I also don't recommend um, these multi-gene panel testing. And the reason I don't is because you don't um, get, there's variation in the types of ways these gene tests are done. And particularly, you're at much higher likelihood of being found to have a mutation with unknown significance. We don't even know what these gene abnormalities mean. We don't know if they should inform how you get treated or what they mean for your family members. And remember, I said the whole reason to get tested was to know how you should be treated and to inform decision making in your family members. And if these types of tests, yes, they might be cheaper, although we actually don't know if your insurance is going to cover them. If they don't give you reliable information, they're going to end up being repeated by a genetic specialist anyway. For a point of clarification, I want to make a distinction between a genetic test on a person and a multi-gene assay on a tumor. You may have heard about a gene assay we do on the tumor itself to decide who does and does not need chemotherapy and how well chemotherapy will work. This is a test done on your body, either through a swab of your cheek or more often a blood test. That's a very different thing from the assay we do of genes in the tumor. What about the cost of genetic testing? If you meet the criteria that I discussed before about who should have genetic testing and counseling, your insurance will most likely cover it without any extra work. Your genetic counseling team will help get you through the insurance process. If you don't have insurance yet, 
Your genetic counseling team can go through an appeal process for you to have it covered through extra pathways. Medicaid is state by state, so it can be a little more restrictive. But with the expanding of the guidelines on who should be tested, we're finding this easier and easier. So how will the results of your genetic test inform your treatment decision-making process? First of all, if you don't carry a, a gene associated with an increase in risk, it won't affect your decision-making process at all. You'll probably go the same path you would before you got tested. You'll be relieved, you can inform your family members that they don't need to be tested either. If you are found to carry an inherited susceptibility for breast cancer, I'm going to start with surgery first. That's the first thing people generally encounter. You may decide that you would like to have a mastectomy of both the involved breast and perhaps even of the other breast. That would be a preventative or prophylactic mastectomy. That would mean that at the time you're diagnosed, you're having a bilateral mastectomy or removal of both breasts. And the reason for that is you're at risk not just for another cancer in the breast with the cancer, but also at some time down the road, you might be at risk for a cancer in the other side. So some people decide to have both breasts removed and then have reconstruction. This is not a necessity. You can just be followed closely on both sides, and that would be done with an MRI and a mammogram. The frequency would be decided between you and your doctor, meaning how often would you have this done. Another type of surgery you might consider, depending on which exact mutation you had, would be whether or not to have your ovaries removed. This is most often considered in people who have a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation. Other mutations, like the CHECK2 mutation, we would actually follow you for your ovaries, but not consider surgery. So it depends on the particular mutation that you have. How about radiation therapy? There are some cancers for which we don't like to give radiation therapy if somebody has a particular gene mutation. So if it looks like you have a syndrome in your family, it might be important to know this. Hormonal therapy, another form of treatment for breast cancer, would not be affected by whether or not you had a gene that was associated with your risk of breast cancer. How about systemic therapy or chemotherapy for breast cancer, targeted therapy? Those decisions won't be affected whether or not you get it, systemic therapy or not, depending on whether or not you have a gene associated with your breast cancer. However, if your cancer were to come back and you had a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation, if your cancer were to come back in other parts of your body and you had advanced breast cancer, you would be a candidate for treatment with a PARP inhibitor. In addition, if somebody else in your family were to have ovarian cancer and you had a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation in your family, that family member would be a candidate for a PARP inhibitor as well and other cancers associated with those genes in your family. It's important to know this for their treatment. I wish you weren't going through this, but I've really enjoyed talking with you today. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe and write comments about other things you'd like to see.